welcome back to Tuesday Club. Welcome back to our virtual Tuesday Club. We miss seeing you face to face, but we're glad that we're able to connect with you in this way. And if you haven't previously been to Tuesday Club when we were meeting face to face, you're very welcome. Um, so we have been following a series in the book of Genesis in 2021 about God's great plans. And it started with God's great plan for Abraham um, and his wife, Sarah. And they had a son called Isaac. And last week we saw how he married a lady called Rebecca. And this week we'll see their children, Esau and Jacob. Um, so this is a picture of Isaac and Rebecca. So you remember from last week's lesson that they took great care in finding the right wife for Isaac, making sure she was somebody who loved God um, and not an idol worshipper, because where they lived, um, most of the people around them worshipped idols. Uh, however, Isaac and Rebecca had been married for 20 years and she still hadn't had any children. Um, so Isaac prayed to God and God answered his prayer and she conceived. Um, and she actually conceived twins and she found that the children were struggling within her. So um, you'll read this in Genesis, the first book of the Bible and verse, sorry, chapter 25. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. So she didn't understand why the children in her womb were fighting. So she asked God and he answered her. And this is what he said. Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. So he said that within her womb, the twins were actually two nations, and that um, the eldest child, the one that was born first, would serve the younger child. Now, it would have been strange news to Rebecca to hear that there were two nations within her womb. Because if you remember um, God's promise to Abraham, and if you don't, don't worry, because I've popped it on the screen now. He said, in blessing, I will bless thee and in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. So there was a single seed that was going to be blessing all the nations. In other words, God's blessing was to just one nation and then that nation would bless all others so it would have been surprising to Rebecca to hear that there were two different nations coming from her two children however two children were born the first child came out and he was very red and he was very hairy and he was called Esau because he was hairy and Esau means hairy and the second child was called Jacob and as they grew up, Esau loved hunting, loved being outside. Jacob was happier to stay at home and in the tents. And on one occasion, Esau went out on a long hunting trip. Esau loved to hunt and he would um, kill venison and cook it for his father. And his father, Isaac, loved him because he loved eating his venison. Anyway, one occasion, Esau went out on one of these hunting trips and it was a long one. And when he came home, he was very hungry. And Jacob had made a stew, um, either a stew or a soup called pottage, made of red lentils. And Esau came home and he was really hungry and he saw that stew and he said, Jacob, give me some of your stew. And Jacob said, first of all, you have to sell me your birthright. Which is an odd thing to say, perhaps. So... What was a birthright? Well, the birthright was something that typically the eldest son had. So Esau would have had this birthright. And it's, if we compare it to our royal family, so that the firstborn son then inherits the, uh, the throne. So it's a similar thing to that, um, that the firstborn son inherits the authority that the father previously had. So Jacob, as he was the second born son, would not have had that. And he asked Esau to give him that right in exchange for some lentil stew or soup. And Esau thought about it and he said, well, I'm so hungry that I'm close to death, a little bit overdramatic perhaps. And so if I'm dead, what good will this birthright do to me? Again, 
over dramatic. He could have just eaten something else. Um, but he thought so lightly of this birthright that he said, fine, I'll sell my birthright to you. And he ate the stew and then he went away and didn't think very much more of it. So the Bible says, thus Esau despised his birthright. He thought very lightly of it. Um, and that gives us a bit of an indication of Esau's character. But we also read that he married two wives. Polygamy is wrong and always has been wrong. But he married two wives and he married two Canaanite women. So remembering the care that Isaac and Abraham had taken to find Isaac the right wife, somebody who was God fearing, Esau didn't care about that at all and instead married two idol worshippers. And that was really upsetting for Isaac and for Rebecca, Esau's mum. So then we fast forward a few years and Jacob is now very old and he is ready to give a blessing to his son. And he calls Esau and says, make me some of that venison that you make me um, and let me eat that and I'll give you your blessing. So Esau um, heard this and he went off to kill um, a deer, um, which is where venison meat comes from, and to prepare it for his dad. But meanwhile, Rebecca, that's an older version of Rebecca that you can see in the picture, she heard what Jacob had said to Esau and um, she came up with her own idea. And she told Jacob that um, Isaac was about to bless Esau. Now it's important, I should have told you that Isaac was losing his sight at this point. He couldn't see very much. And so Rebecca's idea was that Jacob could pretend to be Esau and could get the blessing for himself. And so although Isaac couldn't see, he could feel. So she put skins on Jacob so that he would feel hairy like his brother Esau. And then she also had some pre-prepared venison so that Jacob could get to Isaac before Esau had even managed to return and cook his food. So Jacob went into Isaac with his steaming bowl of venison. And Jacob was a little bit suspicious and wondered how Jacob had managed to kill and cook the meat so quickly. Um, sorry, how Esau had. He blames Esau. <laughs> Um, but he asked Jacob to come close to him so that he could feel him and he felt like Esau. So he went ahead and he blessed him, believing that he was Esau. And a blessing was a special prayer and it was asking God to convey a blessing to the son. Um, well, Esau came back with his meat and asked to be blessed. And Isaac said, what? Who are you? I've already given a blessing. And he realised that he had been deceived by Jacob and he had blessed Jacob instead of Esau. And Esau was heartbroken and said, well, can't you bless me anyway? And Jacob said, well, I've given all these promises to, um, to Jacob already that all his, all his brothers will serve him. What more can I give to you? He did bless Esau, but Esau was very angry with Jacob and threatened to kill him. Um, he said that soon um, Isaac would die. And um, when Isaac was dead, then he would murder Jacob. Um, and Rebecca heard this and to protect Jacob, sent him away for his own safety so that when Esau was less angry, perhaps he could return home. So we see Jacob leaving for his own safety, fleeing his brother Esau's wrath. So what can we learn from this? So one thing to say is that it was God's will that Jacob should inherit from Isaac rather than Esau. Um, and God made that clear when he spoke to Rebecca and explained that the elder son would serve the younger son. However, it was not right for Jacob and Rebecca to act deceitfully. Um, and God made that clear as well to Jacob. And we'll see that perhaps in future lessons. So although the outcome was correct, the means does not justify the ends. And it's never right for us to lie and act deceitfully.
But what can we learn from Esau, who our lesson is really about? Well, he didn't think very highly, did he, of his birthright? And it was only later in life that he came to see the importance. And he tried to still secure the same blessings by getting that blessing from Isaac before he died. And it was only then, when it was taken away from him, that he saw its importance. And we, if you're watching this video, then you've been given an opportunity to hear about God's word. Um, and many people that come to Tuesday Club are in Christian families. They hear about, they've heard about the gospel. And perhaps they've paid no attention to it. Well, it's like an inheritance that we have if we are blessed to be born into a Christian family or to have an opportunity to hear the gospel. And we mustn't take it lightly. Um, the gospel is God's message that his son died on the cross for the sins of his people. And that's a huge thing. We hear it so often, that perhaps we don't think as much of it as we should, but God gave his only begotten son to die in place of sinners like you and like me. And we should learn from Esau that we should take these things seriously before it's too late. So thank you very much for watching and please do come along next week. I'm just gonna close in prayer now. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for the gift of the gospel. We thank you, Lord, for the Bible and for your word. Thank you, Lord, that we have access to it. Lord, we pray that none of us would take any of the blessings that you've given us lightly, that we wouldn't take these things for granted. We ask, Lord, that we would come to you in repentance and faith before it's too late. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.